the developer of this sneaker has a knack or a pedigree for developing obscenely priced sneakers. The Nike Craft Mars Yard 2.0 is retailing now for around about £3,000. So when Tom Sachs produces a sneaker, the sneaker world listens. His general purpose shoe is no exception. A first for me and a sneaker, I must say that isn't usually my style, but I'm excited to try something new. These were labeled as a women's release, although the sizes did go up to, I think, 14 or 15. So I was able to cop my usual UK 11 slash US 12. What is up gang? It's your boy, it's your dog, it's your brother from another mother, AKA the sneaker surgeon, AKA Dr. Vassell, coming back at you with some more heat. Before we get into that though, I need you guys to do your boy a solid and look up Dr. Vassell on the socials and follow me for even more sneaker content and some added. Answer. In addition, I know I asked for a lot, just why not click that like button and also move across to that subscribe so you don't miss future crep check content, which helps me to continue to bring you this content. With all that out of the way, let's get to it. A sneaker that is relatively cheap in the current market, probably one of the cheapest sneakers I've picked up in a long time. They went for $110, that's £100 here in the UK. And the sizing of these were really good for me. I went TTS, that's true to size, on a UK 11 and it fit well. Let's get to the box. Now the box is interesting, the box is jovial. It's quirky, it's an orangey red, and if you notice it has kind of a cartoon written kind of scribbled nightcraft with the swoosh with scribbling over it on the lid. And this pattern continues on virtually all of the panels. Now when we come to the sides, we will see throughout the sides that it mentions it's a general purpose shoe by Tom Sachs. Almost on every panel. And at the bottom we have an interesting quote that is own less, do more. My life is probably the opposite to this, I must say. Now, when we look at the tag, you guys will see that the tag reads, general purpose shoe in my size, that's a US 12, which is a UK 11. In the pecan, that is filled brown colorway. So let's unbox, and when we do, we get white tissue paper, but we get a spiel. A bit of a spiel <laughs> that's there in the lid. And it reads, Nightcraft shoes are manufactured to the exact specification of champion athletes throughout the world. The design and construction of Nightcraft products supports all the activities of your life and tell your story. Nike shuns innovation for its own sake, but embraces it as a necessity. Top quality products fulfill their intended purpose while remaining hard wearing as possible. Before recycling, there is reuse. Before reuse, there is durability. And breathe. <laughs> now, also on the inside of the box, I can get you to see about the sneakers falling out. We have crayons, what looks like crayons anyway, 10 crayons drawn there. Random detail, not sure why that's there. Now, like I said, we just have regular plain old white tissue paper encompassing the sneakers. So let's reveal. Let's reveal it. And when we reveal boom, these bad boys, let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Are these a hit for you or are these a miss? What are my first impressions? My first impressions are these are actually nice. I like the color palette. I don't own many brown shoes and I think they have captivated a good few different hues of brown and the materials suede feel really nice. So I'm impressed. Kicking off at the outsole, we can see a pretty unremarkable outsole. It's black and it's cutely denoted the US patent, if you guys can see. And it has the Nightcraft logo embossed in it as well. It gives me tire vibes, lots of traction, and I guess what it goes for, functionality. I don't see you slipping in any weather wearing these. Looking laterally now, we hit that black outsole that we discussed, and then we come into this dark firm brown midsole. Then we go into this smooth brown suede and then into this shimmery woven upper which has the night tick which is stuck. It's like a sticker 
on to the upper. Looking medially, I've got to say, it's very similar to that of the lateral aspect with the dark black outsole, the dark brown firm midsole into the hues of brown suede with the stitched woven upper with the stuck on swoosh. Then when we come anteriorly, we see the outsole, the black outsole, jumping onto the midsole at the toe tip. And then we come into the brown suede toe tip, which is really smooth, soft, and feels quite nice actually under finger. And then we hit the toe box and the toe box has like a asymmetrical kind of, I guess I'm gonna call it again, a sticker on top of the woven mesh. Then we hit the most inferior portion of the tongue, which guides us back into suede. The suede here and the suede of the eye stays. The suede is flush with the eye stays and you have a dark brown flat lace going through them. The tongue itself is also made of a mesh and it's quite thin. It's thin enough for you to be able to see the cushion beneath it, which there is a moderate amount of cushioning within it. Then when we get to the tip of the tongue, we hit an interesting detail. It has the tongue pull going through the label and the label is white, so it pops against the brown with the orangey red swoosh with the black Nike. And then coming out the top of it is the remainder of the pull, allowing you to quite easily and functionally slip these on. Coming to the posterior portion of the tongue, you will see Tom Sachs giving you his serial numbers and going again on to his spiel, that, that statement that was on the lid of the box, which I'm not going to bore you and read again. The collar itself is made of quite a lightweight, thin piece of suede, which does feel quite nice under the finger. Then as we step in, we have this portion here of cushioning around the heel and they are comfortable. Then we come to the insole, which features the Nightcraft logo with that swoosh with the scribbles over it. It's quite a rigid sneaker. They are comfortable, not the most comfortable sneakers I own, but they are, they are comfortable. Posteriorly, we hit that black outsole with the brown thick midsole, and then we come back into the nice, lovely suede. And if you notice, we hit the box there that says Nike is written in that quite fun font that actually is in boast and therefore gives some texture and pops at you a little bit. And then we finish off at the heel pull. Like I said, with the anterior heel pull, it just lets you slip this sneaker on very easily. So let me know in the comment section what you guys think of this sneaker. My final impressions are that I'm actually pleasantly surprised. Hey, these sneakers were under a hundred pounds, just. And for the hundred pounds, I've got some quite nice feeling material and a brown sneaker to add to my collection. The color palette and aesthetics are very atypical to what you're going to see on the street. So therefore these will stand out. So for the price point, I can't really argue. And I think these therefore will add a new dimension to my wardrobe. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think that this is a worthwhile investment for the retail price of just under hundred pounds, $110? Is it worth it? Do your boy a solid and click the like. And in addition, I know I ask for a lot, why not subscribe so you don't miss future Crep Check content. People, it's been a wave, we out and bad. Peace.